for quite a long period of time, I had abstained from talking about this very controversial topic. However, due to the public demand, I am going to talk about it. People have been frequenting my inbox asking how they can conceive a baby boy, others asking how they can conceive a baby girl. In this particular video, we would like to look at the tips of conceiving a baby boy, tips of conceiving a baby girl. Ask Dr. Othman. Welcome to Ask Dr. Uthman YouTube channel. This is your channel where you are learning medicine at the comfort of your living room. And if you are a new person on this platform, please don't forget to subscribe and put your comment below. Uh, like I've told you, today's topic is quite controversial and we are going to go through it step by step. Uh, we have a question uh, from YouTube uh, by Christy Ugochi. She said, please doctor, which day is best to conceive a baby boy? Uh, another one is Alabera's Kitchen. She says, hi doctor, which day can I conceive a baby boy? And lastly, Rukundo from WhatsApp says, what about if you want to have a baby girl? Thanks. There are several of these questions in my inbox asking about child gender, child sex. However, like I told you in the beginning, this is a very controversial topic. Why controversial? Because I must be very sincere with you that there is only one method that is scientifically proved to be a hundred percent correct that can allow you select the sex of the child you want and that is artificial gender selection during in vitro fertilization however if you're kind of a person who wants to give birth naturally there are no methods that are proved to be a hundred percent correct that can enable you to select the child you want. Though there are several theories, there are several researches which have been done and we are going to be talking about them in this particular video. To begin with, let's first understand a few basic facts from basic science. Number one, a woman produces an egg which has two chromosomes and these two chromosomes are all XX and X represents a baby girl. Therefore, a woman only produces XX chromosomes which X chromosomes represent a baby girl and for a man's sperm it contains X and Y. X represents a baby girl and Y represents a baby boy. Therefore, what happens when these people meet? When they meet, a, a woman will, of course, donate her X. And a man, it's by probability that a man may donate an X or may donate a Y. So, once a man donates a Y chromosome and it is added onto the X chromosome, the result will be a baby boy. However, if a man donates an X chromosome, which will meet with another X, the result will be a baby girl. Therefore, the person that determines the sex of the child, the sex of the baby, is a man. There have been a lot of fights in our cultures whereby men are beating their wives because they are producing only one particular gender. You find the whole family ganging again against the lady because she's producing one gender. But you should understand that sex determination, the gender determination of your baby is done by a man. Therefore, giving birth to a baby boy or a baby girl is purely by chance. However, there are some researches which have been done by some individuals. There are theories which have been tried and have suggested that there are things you can do to enhance your chances of either giving birth to a baby girl and a baby boy. So the first method I would like to introduce to you is the ovulation method. 
So if you are to use this ovulation method, first of all, you must know your ovulation day. You must know when you are going to ovulate. And how do you know that? Of course, I talked about how you can calculate the, uh, the safe days, fertile days, and your ovulation day in one of my previous videos. And if you have not yet watched this video, please visit them and I will also leave a link in the comment section to look at how you can calculate your ovulation day. So if you know your ovulation day, this can be a little easier for you. Why? Because let's give an instance that your ovulation day is the 20th of August 2020. So if your ovulation day is the 20th of August 2020, we are going to use a few issues here. We are going to use a theory by uh, Dr. Landrum Shitos Brewer. Dr. Landrum Shitos Brewer is uh, the pioneer of in vitro fertilization. And he stated the following differences between a male sperm and a female sperm. When I'm talking about a sperm, I'm talking about the, the, the male fluid which is produced during the intercourse and that fluid contains uh, two chromosomes. Like I told you, it has the XY and XX. When I say the female sperm, I mean the X and when I say the male sperm, I mean the Y. So he stated the differences between a boy sperm and a girl sperm. And what were the differences? He said that the boy sperm swims faster. It is faster than the female sperm. So this one is faster. But he also stated that the boy sperm is smaller in size. Is smaller. He further stated that the boy sperm survives for less days as compared to a girl sperm. Uh, so which means a boy sperm survives less and that is three days. It only survives on earth for, or in, in the woman's womb or in the woman's V for only three days. Whereas the girl sperm can survive for up to five days. And therefore we would like to use this to find out if you can really target the gender you need. So, if your ovulation day is on the 20th of August 2020, it means generally, generally, your, your sperm has five days to survive. And therefore, five days to survive are, so on the 20th, 19th, 18th, 17th, and the 16th day. So, these are the five days. These are the five days. Five, four, three, two, and one. So this is the ovulation day. So let us now look at this. If you have, if you met your partner on at five days before ovulation, what will happen? You meet your partner five days before ovulation. Your partner or uh, your partner will deposit, of course, sperms which contain the boy and the girl, that is five days before the ovulation, will deposit sperms that contain a boy and a girl. According to this theory, the boy sperm, by the third, by the third day, one, two, three, on 18th, the boy sperm will have died. Remember, on 20th is when the egg is produced. It's when the egg is now ready. It is in the fallopian tube, ready for fertilization. So it is waiting for this sperm. But by the third day, the boy sperm is already dead. And therefore, who is still surviving? It is the girl sperm. Therefore, the girl sperm will reach on the fifth day when it is still alive. And therefore, it will be the girl sperm to fertilize the egg. And therefore, the result will be a baby girl. Therefore, if you had intercourse with your partner five days before ovulation, the result is likely to be a baby girl. Same applies to four days prior to ovulation, it's again a baby girl. So if you had intercourse or if you met your partner three days prior to ovulation, it means both sperms will be available on the 20th day. Boy and girl sperm will be available on the 20th day. And therefore, which sperm is going to fertilize the egg? This is what now, this brings us to another factor, another difference between a boy and a girl sperm, the speed. We know that the boy sperm is faster 
than the girl sperm. And therefore, if they have been put at the same level, it is the boy sperm that will hit the target before the girl sperm. And therefore, if you had intercourse on three days before ovulation, it is likely that you'll have a result of a baby boy because the sperm of a baby boy swims faster than the baby girl. And also, if you had intercourse two days before ovulation or on the ovulation day, actually, if you really want to target a baby boy, it is better to have to meet your partner on the ovulation day. Why? Because the boy sperm will reach or will move faster than the girl sperm and therefore it will fertilize. Let me bring this into a, 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 a simple issue. We have two sperms, the boy and the girl sperm. One is a faster runner and the other one is a slow runner but it runs for a long distance. So in conclusion about this particular method, if you want a baby boy, you should meet your partner three days or two days prior to ovulation, all on the ovulation day. Three days, two days prior to ovulation, all on the ovulation day itself. The chances of having a baby boy are high. And if you want to have a baby girl, meet your partner five days or four days prior to the ovulation. And do not have intercourse again until after ovulation. So let's look at other methods. We are going to look at two other methods. And these methods were again suggested by Dr. Landrum Shittles. I told you this is the pioneer of in vitro fertilization. He suggested two more uh, ways of conceiving a particular gender you need. However, these methods have been widely criticized by some scientists. However, he still has a lot of proponents for this method. Let's look at them. Number one is female orgasm. He said that during uh, orgasm, female orgasm, there is production of alkaline solutions. And these solutions are important for a male sperm survival. And therefore, he said that if you want a baby boy, make sure that your woman reaches orgasm. That is according to Dr. Landrum Shittles and his proponents. Another method he researched about is the sex position. He maintains that deep penetration will give a result of a baby boy. Why? He gives a reason that during deep penetration, the sperms are deposited nearer, closer on at the cervix. And therefore, when they are deposited near or close to the cervix, there is a short distance from the cervix onto the fallopian tubes where fertilization is going to occur. This gives an advantage to the male sperm, to the boy sperm, because it swims faster though it goes for shorter distance. And therefore, if they are deposited near the fertilization site, it means the boy sperm will have an advantage. However, the last two methods I have discussed, and that is the orgasm and sex position, are not 100%. Actually, I would say their effectivity and accuracy levels are not known. But you can try any of the methods, or all of them, probably you can be one of the people that will benefit from the method. Thank you very much for watching Ask Dr. Uthman YouTube channel. And if it is your first time to watch this video, please subscribe, be a member so that you can be notified every time we put out any educative and medical video. Thank you very much. I sign out. Ask Dr. Uthman. Have you ever imagined yourself having twins? Actually, to many people, it's a very big blessing to have twins. In my own culture, when you get twins, you are called a salongo. And for ladies, they are called narongo. In this particular video, we would like to look at the factors that can contribute for you to have twins and if there is anything you can do in order to have twins. Lastly, we shall also look at how you can take care of your pregnancy if you have twins. Twins. Sylvia, money is about menstrual. How long does it take when you, you don't need to get pregnant? The days in between there. So in summary, your question is about safe days, how someone gets pregnant. Okay, okay, okay.
Say God free. Chie chiva kwa mtu wa kumiyoke mimo. Binchibi ya basobo lo koze sa. Okula banga zise chintuwe chobanga chigua o. Continue with me in this video and learn about number one, how normal lips look like, what causes red lips, and how you can treat or prevent red lips. Uh, today we have a question from one of our followers on Facebook, Nakadu Jamaima. She says, Hello doc, I am 28 years old, went to the hospital yesterday, and I was told that I have a cyst on my tubes. First, I mean, is it curable? And can I ever become pregnant? Continue with me in this video to learn the following. Number one, what assists? Two, how do you know that you have a cyst? Those are signs and symptoms of a cyst. What causes cysts? How can you treat them? And what are the complications of these cysts? I mean, can you become pregnant when you have a cyst? Can you menstruate with a cyst? Hi, Dr. Uthman. Thank you for the amazing show. We are proud of you. Doctor, is it true that you can test for AIDS from the saliva? And if yes, can AIDS be spread through the saliva, especially during kissing? What you do, mm. you pass this spatula. Mm. Let me just open, you can close a bit. Uh -huh. You pass it around the gum once, yes. the upper gum. Okay. Then you pass it along the, the lower gum once, okay. like this. Mm. Then after doing that, Yes. You get the, the, the what? The buffer, you insert it inside. Okay. You leave it for some time. Leave it for some time. Then afterwards, 